Hey guys, so today we're gonna talk about a plugin, a color grading plugin. I just realized that I've been using this plugin for like 95% of all of my projects. I'm not 100% sure if how I'm using it most of the time is the actually intended way. So for full disclosure, now the brand actually reached out to me and uh, asked if I wanted to do a review. They promised me a license for that, so let's hope uh, I get another one, I could really use it. But I am really honest in that review and also they don't get to see the video before I post it and they don't get to say what I can talk about and what not. So now, what plugin am I talking about? I'm talking about Dehancer Pro. Um, this is actually a color grading plugin, it's available for different systems. I'm using it in DaVinci Resolve, but now they also have versions for stills, so plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. I mainly used it for video, but also for photography in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to show you some examples now, um, but first let's talk about what does this plugin actually do. So Dehancer is one of those plugins that tries to emulate analog film. And when we talk about analog film and the emulation of analog film, it is important to know what actually creates this analog look and that it consists of multiple factors that create this look as a whole. So here we talk about things like film grain, halation, bloom or glow, um, color rendition, all those things play really important parts in creating this look. There is not this one single analog film look. Uh, there are multiple different ones and they are mostly depending on what kind of camera you've been using, what kind of film stock you use, especially when you have for example 8mm film versus 35mm film, there are worlds apart between those. And one thing that I noticed instantly when I opened up Dehancer for the first time, I saw that this plugin doesn't create just one single analog kind of look with one click but in fact that this is a very sophisticated software that gives you a lot of different options to choose and a lot of different parameters that you can dial in to also create a lot of different analog looks. So a little note here, therefore you either really have to know how analog photography and analog film actually works or you're just playing around with the sliders and over time you will definitely find out how the whole analog process actually works and what different parameters are there that create this kind of look. So let's take a look into the app and I'm going to show you what kind of parameters we have here that we can dial in and what kind of controls we have over the analog simulation. So this is an Iceland, a shot that I pretty recently um, did on this black diamond beach, really beautiful scenery overall. Because one important thing is definitely you have to know beforehand what kind of look you want to go for. So um, you really have to imagine, okay, what feel do you want this uh, footage to, uh, to emit? So this is the graded clip. This is what Dehancer does to the clip. So there's pretty a lot going on. And this is before. I just made it a bit warmer and I put a little bit more emphasis on the skin tones. If we look here, the thing that I want to show you is compound note. Here it consists of three different notes. It's kind of a lot of tweaking going on here. And then here we have Dehancer. <laughs> There's really a lot here. And I pretty much relied on the Kodak Vision 3 250D um, emulation. This one just creates this really cool bluish um, white. So I love this, as we can see here. Um, we have this kind of a little bit of purple colored um, sky and water. There's, there's kind of some magenta tones um, going on here. Now they're completely gone and they have this blue greenish um, color. On the other hand, we really have an emphasis on the skin tones again. So we can see, I really like what the color rendition does to the skin tones here. So they're pretty pleasing and it's a great color contrast to the rest of the scene. Um, so as you can see here, I relied more on the on the presets that we already have. Uh, here we have the film grain set to 35 millimeter with an ISO of 500. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, the same here with the halation uh, 35 millimeter and also the bloom. So we turn that on and off. You can see the glow around the around the bright edges. It's the same with the halation. Here we can really really see the red pretty well. And if we turn it on and off, here we can see that. Also, we see a little bit of more warmth 
um, within the skin tones. So grain is actually one of my favorite aspects of analog film. And there are also multiple different ways how you can use it. Dehancer has different presets that are based on film sizes and their ISOs. Smaller film sizes and higher ISOs produce more prominent and bigger film grain that are mostly associated with 8mm hand cameras and amateur video. And bigger film like 35mm or 65mm produce more detail and smaller and less grain. They are more linked to big cinema. Let's take a closer look on how different sizes of grain in Dehancer affect our image. So now it just looks like uh, we had an 8mm um, hand camera that we used on our on our travel trip. So this looks kind of way more more homemade, and it, it just emits this feeling as if it was an amateur video shot with an 8 mm And on the other hand, if we go back and apply the 30 mm preset, it instantly looks way more cinematic, and it looks way more as if it was shot on a cinema camera uh, with 35 mm film in that. Case. So when creating your overall look or in Dehancer, it is important to keep in mind how your footage should actually look like, what kind of um, feel it should emit and how details like film grain or film damage uh, play a role in that. I really like how Dehancer gives us those different presets, they are based on film sizes and still give you the flexibility to manipulate the different parameters to dial in your own looks too. And I would really love if Dehancer would also add those parameters for how faded the film actually looks like and maybe also add a slider where you can choose how expired the film stock is. I want to show you a different example. As I said before, this now is a photography example where I shot with an anamorphic lens. I actually did a photo shoot with a um, musician. He's called Tom Joseph. Check his music out, it's really cool. So he just wanted to have these photos that look like they would be stills out of a movie. He showed me some stuff that he had in mind and then I instantly thought, okay, um, I'm gonna use my anamorphic lens so that we really have this uh, cinema scope format for the photos um, that he could use as banners. So the lens itself already was pretty soft and we had those cool lens flares. And then I decided, okay, I am gonna do the um, grading within DaVinci. The main reason for me was to have the Dehancer plugin available. <laughs> and I kind of wanted to uh, edit it in a way that I would actually grade a video. And here we have one of the final stills. Um, we can see first this compound note. This is how I would also um, do this within Lightroom, for example. So I just maybe brightened up his face, um, stuff like that. I added um, more vignetting. I also accentuated the sun flare here. Um, so that's mostly what I did. So nothing really that big. Also here in the end, I just faded the blacks around the vignetting a bit more. Um, so there's not a lot of actual grading going on. So the main grading is going on here with the answer. So here we have a before and an after. So instantly we can see that most of the overall feel is created by the answer. Um, what I really love here is when we can see the hair here, the fine thin hairs. Uh, it's a pretty sharp image. Although it's soft, it's still pretty sharp. Also the focus is a little bit off. It's pretty much here um, around the hair. And when we now add the answer, we can see that the grain is going all over the hair and I also turned down, here we can see the settings, I also turned down the film resolution quite a bit. So when we gonna put it back to 100, you can see the image is pretty sharp. And this also makes the effect look kind of a bit cheap. So we can really see uh, the grain here, but it just looks over sharp and it doesn't look like analog film. It just looks like a like grain plugin that's laid over the image itself but if we turn down the film resolution we kind of see the image becoming a bit softer and we lose a little bit of resolution but i just loved it here maybe that's too low we can see we can really turn it down uh, until it's a blurred image we don't want it in that case <laughs> especially not that much but i really loved that we have that we can really exaggerate all of the effects. So the overall photo workflow in DaVinci isn't that great, but it was the best option for me to deal with the anamorphic de-squeeze. If you're interested in how you can create different kinds of workflows in all the different photo editing apps for anamorphic photos, you can watch the full guide here where I explained in all the different photo apps how you can create your anamorphic photo workflow.
I'm pretty happy with the results. The images give off this feel as if they were stills from this movie with all the characteristics necessary. Okay, so now the whole analog emulation, of course it's the most obvious way how you would use the Dehancer plugin, but as I said before, of course I don't want to have the simulation on every project and on everything that I'm doing, but as I've teased before, I'm using it for nearly all of my projects. There's this other different way how I'm using it. Now I'm going to tell you about it. Okay, so the film simulation of Dehancer, as we've seen before, also greatly affects the color, the hue and the saturation values of an image. And while the main focus, of course, is the analog simulation process, as a side effect, it is also kind of uniform in color and brightness values that are closer together. Also because of the limitation of the black and the white point, it can also uniform the perceived brightness of different shots that are pretty similar. So that means by creating an overall look with Dehancer for a specific scene or even for a whole video, you can for example take shots that consist of a multi-camera setup or maybe because of slight changes in brightness or color temperature when for example relying on sunlight during a shoot, then most of the time it takes the longest to match the last 10% of a shot. And this is exactly where Dehancer comes into play. Let me show you what I mean. I just like to use it to kind of merge all of the shots, all of the colors within a shot from different angles to make it look more uniform. And here there's a really good example. So we shot this concert. Um, it was about 16 cameras that we had placed in total. I'm going for a pretty heavy grade in that case. So this is just one angle from uh, one perspective. I've done some preparing um, on, every, on every camera, but it's just to get like a more neutral look just going for a Rec. 709. And then here um, I'm using an adjustment layer over all of those shots and here I'm just going for a specific look. In that case I've even used two instances of Dehancer and um, <clears throat> I'm also using two different film emulations so I don't think this, this is really going for a faithful emulation look but I just used it to get a specific look. And what we can instantly see here is the before. So those are pretty intense red lights and, and the scene overall doesn't look that good. Also, I don't really like the skin tones there. The, the actual color of the skin tones are lost nearly completely. And this is how it looks with the grade. And what I really like is that the reds aren't that intense anymore. Um, so the other colors also um, become a stronger in relation to the red. Also when we take a look at the skin tones, the skin tones look pretty good actually. So I haven't done any specific adjustments with the uh, skin tone colors. Those are just two different uh, film emulations with Dehancer and they already make the skin tones pretty pleasing. It, it all gets this kind of warm wooden uh, look and feel. And if we just skip a bit through the different angles here, it just looks way more uniform. If we turn down the Dehancer plugin, we can see that they are already pretty close, but there's way more difference between those two shots, for example, than with the plugin. This is just scenario where I really love using Dehance. So before using the plugin and before working with a specific look, I try to make the shots look almost the same, but before using the answer I really tried to match them completely with the brightness values, with the skin tones values, with the saturation, and oftentimes it really becomes a pain to get it to look right. And now I'm just more going for a pretty similar look and I tried that overall they fit together. Then I create the look with the answer and then I use it overall shots. Most of the time it's pretty solid and I just use it like that. Sometimes I then go back into the clip and tweak some settings a little bit more, but a lot of times it just works and it just looks pretty uniform and it has a specific look that matches all of the shots. And this is how I really love using the answer when I'm not just going for an uh, analog emulation. So now that you know how I'm using the answer and what I really like about it, I've been really praising it a lot now, I'm also going to talk about the things that I don't like about Dehancer. I wouldn't say in general that there's something that I really dislike about it. One aspect that's kind of bothering me from time to time is that some parts of the plugin are extremely power hungry. For example, the grain, which is really good and I 
can definitely understand why it needs that much hardware power. It still is very demanding on your hardware, especially when you have lots of effects uh, in DaVinci and you just want to play back your footage, it sometimes won't work uh, when you have film grain on it and also the rendering process uh, will get much slower when you use it so for projects that are really long or if you don't really have bigger budgets or you want to work really fast you really have to calculate and think about it if you're really using the dehancer film grain which looks very good but it's just so demanding or you just use an overlay where most people won't recognize the difference anyways uh, which just gives you much faster playback and render times most of the time I do some workarounds or I just use it at the end and when playbacking it I just get rid of the film grain or I use a different film grain that's not that demanding and then switch it out when I render the final product. That's a way how I can get around it but still you have to keep that in mind especially when you don't have a really good hardware or you want to use a lot of uh, effects in your effects chain. Another thing that bothers me a bit is although you can see there's really some great research in the plugin and it's just great that you have all of this uh, film stocks that you can use and they really look pretty identical and you have this great and really big selection that you can use which I really appreciate it's still pretty expensive so for a lot of people it isn't even an option to buy and use it so they just use different ones that are cheaper I would say it's just targeted for professionals people market their footage and their services as looking analog the plugin itself offers so many features and I really enjoy as I said it before using it on most of my footage. So now we've come to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Check out Dehancer if you want to. You can use my promo code FLOWHANSER. <laughs> it would really help me out. And let me know what kind of experience you have and what kind of apps and plugins you use to simulate analog footage. So, well, see you next time.